Hey guys, um, obviously I can't help myself reacting to the game last night. Uh, the Warriors won game three. It's now 2-1 Kings. Um, I thought it was a very concerning performance for the Kings. Obviously, the Warriors were in a desperate situation. They had to get the win, but they were missing Draymond. They were missing Gary Payton. You could argue they're arguably their two best defensive players. And yet the Kings were held to less than 100 points. Um, yeah, just not sure what happened there for the Kings. They, they didn't bring, you know, I, I was raving about the way um, they played so aggressively at home. Aggressive yet disciplined. I didn't see that in this game. I mean, they, they, I mean, they got blown off the court tonight, um, especially in that second half. So... Um, why? It's hard. It's hard to explain. I don't know why they didn't bring the same aggressivity and intensity. What I did notice is the Warriors um, were able to move the ball a lot easier. It, it was very easy. Now, is it is it because the Warriors just played better? Is it just that the Grizzlies were less physical? I tend to think that. I mean, the the Kings were less physical. I, I tend to think they was a ladder. Um, you know, they, you saw it. I mean, the Warriors only had 12 turnovers. They had 31 assists. They got a lot of offensive rebounds, too. Um, and that happens a lot, usually, when when you have good ball movement, you tend to have a good offensive rebound because um, guys on defense are kind of running around chasing down threes and chasing guys on the perimeter, and so the obviously the paint become less crowded and that gives your guys more of an opportunity to get in there. It's more of an even battle to get an offensive rebound. So, um, yeah, the, 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 it just felt like the Warriors got whatever they wanted. And, and then, you know, and both teams didn't shoot well, but because the Warriors got so many offensive rebounds, they had so many opportunities that it, they just blew the game wide open. Uh, and I thought they had really good shots. A lot of them just didn't go in. Um, and yeah, the, the the Kings bench was just really, really cold. I mean, whether it was Malik Monks, um, yeah, I mean, he, he did not shoot. The, I think it was one and nine from threes. Um, Davion Mitchell didn't have the the same um, the same impact. You know, Trey Lyles didn't have any impact on the game. So yeah, I mean, it, it's I thought last time was very concerning because look. I get that the Warriors were at home and they're supposed to be, they're supposed to win that, you know, their home games and, and all that. As they say that this year doesn't start till a home team loses. But, you know, when the Warriors went to Sacramento, Sacramento gave everything they had at them and they still barely beat them in those two games, right? At the Chase Center last night, I mean, it was a convincing blowout win. And, I mean, you hope that the Kings are just relaxing and coasting, but... Again, because Draymond and Gary Payton were not playing, there's no way the Kings, I think, took that game lightly because they know they can go up 3-0 and shut the door. Once it's 3-0, the series is over. And yet, they didn't do that, um, which makes me believe that it's because they couldn't. And if they couldn't, why are they going? What is going to change in game four? And a lot of people will say, well, they don't need to win a road game to win the series, but... As the longer this series goes on, the more Steve Kerr and the Warriors are going to be able to build team chemistry, get practices in, and make those adjustments. And by the time Game 5 and Game 7 roll around, both teams will know each other really well how to play each other. And it's going to be who has the most experience, who can handle their emotions better, and who's more talented. And the answer to that is the Warriors. So I, I'm very skeptical Um that the Kings are going to be able to win. I mean, remember, the Warriors were down 2-1 to Boston, and they went, you know, in Boston and got a key game, and they they closed that out in six. And so, I forget if it was five or six, but, you know, they, they, they won, I think, three of their last four games against Boston. So, um. Once it starts clicking for the Warriors and they make those adjustments and they start playing with team chemistry, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really tough to stop them. Um, and I thought the Warriors and I thought the Kings, 
last night. And I wonder if officiating and the Draymond suspension played a role because I wonder if prior to the game, they, the officials said, we're going to watch this closer. We're not going to let it escalate, which means that guys aren't going to be as aggressive, be able to be as aggressive. And hence, the Kings defensively weren't going to be as aggressive. And hence, the Warriors were going to be allowed to have more, more ball movement. Um, which opens up everything because it means more assists, means more offensive rebounds, it means more, um, it means less turnovers, it means you can set your defense, and it means that they have to force Sacramento on a half half court offense. And that's not what Sacramento wants to do. Sacramento wants to run, even if they're not getting open lamps on transition, they at least want to catch the the defensive um, of the Warriors out of rotation. That didn't happen last night, and. I think they're starting to pick up on how to defend um, Deer and Fox. They're just going to go underneath the screen and force him to beat him from three points, which means that Deer and Fox is not a great three point shooter. He's going to have to start hitting his threes. He can, but it's just, if, you know, if the Kings get in a shootout battle with the Warriors, I'll take the Warriors all day long because, you know, they got two of the greatest shooters and they got a lot of other shooters on that team, you know, Poole, D.V. Senso. So, uh, and also, you, you, they let other guys for the Warriors build confidence, you know, the Moody's. The Kamingas. I mean, the Warriors. Even, like the Warriors, like have a great defensive team. Like, like if you look at their defensive individual talent, once it clicks, is they're gonna be really good defensively. You got Jonathan Kaminga, six seven, athletic. He showed a lot of bright spots defensively this year. Moody played really good defense yesterday. Divi Central's a really good defender, perimeter defender. Um. You know, Andrew Wiggins is a really good defender. Kevon Looney is a really good defender. Draymond Green is one of the best defenders maybe all time. So, uh, and Gary Payton Jr. is a really good on-ball defender. So you look at all that, and I'm I'm saying, you know, if the main threat is going to come from, you know, um, De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk, you know, Malik Monk is going to get his. I just don't think he's going to be super efficient here on out. You know, he'll shoot in the low 40% and he'll shoot in the low 30s from threes. That's fine. And I think Malik Monk's going to come back down to earth. So then who's going to get the scoring? Well, Werder is going to, you know, is going to have to do something. Um, you know, and last time he was 6 of 12. So that, that from the field, that's not bad, but 1 of 6 from threes. So if he's not able to hit his threes, then, you know, Keegan, Keegan Murray hasn't, you know, he's a rookie. So, you know, the playoff are a different ball game. So he's struggling. Obviously, Sabonis is going to have an impact, but I, but, you know, Looney owned him yesterday, and I think the only reason he didn't own him in Sacramento is because he was getting foul trouble. And I think he was getting foul trouble, him and Draymond and the rest of them, is because the Kings were getting such good penetration inside. And I think the adjustments the Warriors have made are going to make that very difficult. Like I said, I think they're going to go underneath the screens. Um, and even if they don't, I think having Draymond in the lineup, Draymond can't cover the perimeter well, and he can he can move his feet back down to the paint. So I... I think I think the Kings needed to send a message last night, um, and they didn't do that. And I think relying on your home court advantage, you know, to win you games, I think is is a very risky proposition, especially for a team that has very little playoff experience. Um, I, I honestly think the Warriors. It's not like the Warriors were not trying to win game one and two. I think they just lack cohesiveness and team chemistry, and to to, to give them kind of a, a freebie in game three, you know, and build them confidence, I think spells trouble um, for, for the Kings. Um, uh, the Kings win game four, like, I mean, I'm just going to be eating my words, but I just don't see that happening. And if it goes back to game five in Sacramento, I like the Warriors. I really do in Sacramento. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'll pick, I'll pick, the worst to win either game five or game seven because I just think they have too many good defensive players. And, you know, the thing is, playing on the road at first, even in tough environments, at first it's it's suffocating, you know? But once you get used to it, it's kind of like, you know, once once the Warriors got used to playing in Boston last year in the finals, it was a different series, you know? And they, they were able to win some games in Boston. So I think, I think it's going to be the same thing with the Kings. And... Um, yeah, I just, I, I've get so I've got the Warriors. I'm pretty confident they're gonna win. Um, it's still gonna be an interesting series because 
as long I mean, if, you know, the Kings already won two games, so they don't need, you know, they just need two more wins. And if they get if they get one more win, they put they put the champs on the rope. So anything can happen, but unless a severe injury to the Warriors, um, yeah, I I don't I don't see the Kings pulling this off. But anyways, I still think it's going to be a really exciting series. I'm really excited also about Memphis Lakers tomorrow. Uh, I hope John Morant comes back. Um, but I still got the Lakers. I think the Lakers can pull it off. But, um, you know, in short, it was the Lakers had a disappointing loss at that game too. Same thing as the as the Kings, right? With, with John Moran out, I thought they had a perfect opportunity. And even though the Grizzlies are really good uh, without John Moran, I, I just think the Lakers, you know, they didn't came, come out with that energy and they might live to regret it. Or at least it's going to be a much longer series. So we'll see. I still like the Lakers. I think they're much better. But anyways, um, so we'll see how everything unfolds. I wish you guys a good night. I wish you guys a good weekend. Enjoy basketball. Enjoy life. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.